fuck. Oh fuck, man, it's Bigfoot, man. It's fucking Bigfoot. He's here to assault us. I'm being so assaulted right now by Bigfoot. Oh. Bigfoot assaults on the dark sewer network. Welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot Assault on the Dark Sewer Network. I am Mystery Man, and this week I'll be reading you a story from a Bigfoot survivor who is currently locked up in a mental institution. Title is Veggie Dog Wookie. The wooden beams of the stage creaked as Cassius Fox trotted across it. The whole crew was there watching the rehearsal. Everyone except Lori, that is. I was Lori's understudy, so I was here reporting for duty. Don't get me wrong, I was excited to get a chance at the spotlight and a paying gig, but I held things in perspective. These die-hard actor types would spend their last dime on voice acting lessons. Me? I keep my day job, jack of all trades, Master of none, as they say. Between teaching mommy and me yoga to the throng of yuppie gentrifiers and cat sitting and dog walking, I was a busy modern girl. But since I hadn't fully committed, the blackout project had stopped the hazing inductions. I hadn't made it to be part of Troop 13's family. As an understudy, I was regarded as a part-time consultant. I waved to Cassius, whose blonde wavy hair lit up like honey being put up to the lights as the cyclorama behind him reflected light purple beams of light. It was another experimental show produced by the Blackout Project, a wannabe theater troupe based out of a converted senior center in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Vintage revivals of sea plays and a patchwork of borrowed concepts and themes from contemporary pop culture underscored by the hipster angst extant in all these lovely kiddos. Amanda, the assistant director, was taking notes furiously on her legal notepad. I sat down next to her. She did not acknowledge me until Cassius and the rest of the ensemble walked off stage right. Months earlier, Cassius gave me the nickname Cat Whisperer, when I treated Amanda's cat, who has chronic kitty ADHD. Did I ever get a single thank you from Amanda? No, that's not Amanda's style. Thanks for coming on shut sort notice. I think Lori got the stomach bug that's been going around, said Amanda. No worries. I'm happy to hang with everybody again, I replied. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you about our team building retreat this weekend. We are headed to Monticello Friday night. Please tell me you could make it. Er, I hesitated, since I was a city girl at heart, and packing a huge bag to lug around and peeping outside did not exactly appeal to me. We'll be doing that trust training to build an on-stage character chemistry. If you can't make it, then you might as well forget about the part, said Amanda hastily. Okay, I'll be there. I'd get to see Cassius play with his long hair all weekend and get some fresh air, so I guess that's a win-win in my book. The next morning, we arrived at the retreat space at 10 a.m. It was still August, but getting nippy. Cassius was in charge of the food, so we had to lug the coolers filled with veggie dogs and iceberg lettuce to the kitchenette area. I'm so psyched that we'll get to be on stage together again, said Cassius. I blushed and quickly tried to change the subject. So where are the condiments? Did we bring ketchup? Amanda stormed in with her iPad scheduler, pointing to her Google Watch and screeched, Ten minute warning until sharing starts in the labyrinth. The labyrinth was a round hut with woven blankets and comfy cushions, a modern sweat lodge, if you will. After the sharing rituals and fake tears, I decided to walk to my room to get on a few more layers, and before the evening hit, I strolled down the dirt path. Bushes and thick pine trees framed either side of the road. I passed a large boulder with children's yellow and red handprints. How idyllic this little space was. I took a deep breath and could smell a touch of basil and pine in the air, Maybe this weekend was just what the doctor ordered. The sun sank lower and lower. All the chipmunks and birds scattered into the underbrush. Over the scattering, I became attuned to a distinct sound, a loud and abrasive kush, kush, like footsteps on vegetation, twigs, and pebbles. It became louder. 
I looked down and increased my pace a bit. Crush! I saw a shadow dart from the corner of my eye, and then I started to run. Meow! I heard it again. Meow! I thought I had left all the stray cats behind me in the city. Whoa! 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 I felt a touch graze my arm. I was about to scream when, all of a sudden, Cassius appeared. I smacked his chest. You were actually scared, Cassius left. Don't be a jerk. You know I'm out of my comfort zone, I said. Cassius shrugged and my heart melted. I smiled. Just making sure you're ready for the next show. I gotta run up ahead to get dinner started for everyone. I watched as Cassius skillfully ran ahead in his flip-flops to the barbecue area. I was almost at my cabin when I spotted a glint of blonde in the verdant mass surrounding me. Cassius, I thought you were on veggie dog duty. A putrid smell entered my nostrils like hand that was left out into the sun, and it got slimy with residue when it mixed in with an MTA bathroom. Cassius, knock it off, I demanded, but I knew it was not Cassius. About fifty feet away, a Chewbacca-like being calmly scratched its side and almost looked puzzled. I think I had interrupted its meditating, or something. Lord knows. The black eyes, like an abyss, focused at my chest. I felt those deep, black button eyes pierce through me and x-ray vision to my heart. I could hear my heart beat, each and every beat, like it was projected through a loudspeaker. I felt the moistness in all of my orifices at once. I think I peed myself, but I couldn't quite tell. This creature was endowed with some blonde highlights and a massive height. I think only a second passed, but it felt like an eternity. I knew that if I ran or showed my fear, it would just trigger the creature. I wanted to scream for Amanda or Cassius. Then I remembered the advice my mother gave me as a streetwise wacko repellent. Do the unpredictable. Confuse and confound it until you could get away. I started reciting lines from the Blackout's next play. Then I did a cartwheel and talked about how I wanted veggie dogs. I don't remember exactly. At one point, I asked, though, if Chewie wanted some veggie dogs. Want some veggie dogs? You like Cassius? He is a good cook. Ooh, ah. Then I began to convulse and stick my tongue out. I took out my hoodie and swung it above my head in some sort of desperate strip tease. Each movement I took a step forward, and Chewie had it moved since we first locked eyes. I felt some pistachios in my pocket. I threw them at Chewie and ran for my life. I ran for a few seconds before I had the balls to look back. No tracking. I finally made it back to the camp. Cassius! I fell into his arms and he held me tight. This is crazy, but I totally just saw a giant Bigfoot-looking thing. Everyone needs to buddy up and be careful outside. Some of the troop dismissed my alarm as a nature high. A part of me wished that Amanda would have had the encounter instead, so Bigfoot could scare the arrogance out of her. Really, Lisa? Come on. Amanda was not buying it, but the person who counted believed me. Cassius rubbed my back and said he would protect us. I spent the rest of the retreat locked in my cabin and earned the new nickname, The Bigfoot Whisperer. I learned that the creature enjoys experimental theater, and I got a new favorite food added to my list, veggie dogs. The best darn veggie dogs I ever had because I was alive to taste them. I would never forget that weekend. That was the first and last weekend retreat I ever took with the Blackout Project. Tune in next time for more Bigfoot Assault. Only on the dark sewer.